Hey guys, it's Owen from Wrestling Inc. back with another wrestling news roundup. Without any further ado, let's get into today's biggest stories in the world of professional wrestling. Big title change on last night's AEW Dynamite. Last night's AEW Dynamite saw Thunder Rosa finally pull out the victory and become AEW Women's Champion for the first time. As can be seen on social media and during the broadcast, Brett Baker and Thunder Rosa pushed themselves to their limits during the steel cage match for the AEW Women's Championship. The defending champion Baker started sporting blood about halfway through the bout, setting the tone for another brutal encounter between the two. As the end of the match drew near, Britt Baker executed an air raid crash from the top rope, driving Rosa into a large pile of steel chairs. Another big spot from the top turnbuckle saw Rosa push Baker down on another stack of chairs, but that wasn't quite enough to finish the job. The woman then brought out thumbtacks in a sort of sick homage to their unsanctioned lights out match from one year ago. The finish came when Rosa hit Baker with the thunder driver in the thumbtacks to get the 1-2-3. Rosa came up short in capturing the AEW Women's Championship at the Revolution pay-per-view on March 6. Despite the setback on last week's AEW Dynamite, there was a match between Thunder Rosa and Layla Hirsch to determine the number one contender for the AEW Women's World title. With that victory, Rosa got one more shot at the title and successfully won it. The Young Bucks tease WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hart's arrival in AEW. On this week's St. Patrick's Day Slam edition of AEW Dynamite, the Young Bucks seemingly tease that WWE Hall of Famer Bret Hart is joining AEW to manage FTR. As can be seen during the broadcast, FTR justified why they fired Tully Blanchard as their manager last week. Quote, that wasn't easy to do, Cash Wheeler admitted. It's been obvious that Tully has checked out. When we won the tag titles, he was laser focused, but lost his focus later. And when you lose your focus, you lose your job. This was followed by the Bucks confronting FTR, quote, No matter what you do, even if you hire the best there is, the best manager in the world, it's not going to matter, Matt Jackson told FTR. Because deep down inside, you're always going to remain the second best tag team in AEW, end quote. Jackson comments were clearly a reference to Bret Hart. After last week's Dynamite, FTR sent out a tweet that hinted at Hart becoming their new manager. Harwood took to Twitter after this week's show to once again tease Hart's arrival in AEW. For what it's worth, Brian Danielson and John Moxley executed the heart attack during their match against Chuck Taylor and Wheeler Utah. That move was made popular by the Hart Foundation in the 1980s. In May 2019, Bret Hart appeared at AEW's Double or Nothing pay-per-view to unveil the AEW World Championship title. Later that year, he welcomed the idea of making future appearances for AEW. Chris Jericho debuts sports entertainer gimmick references Kevin Owens on AEW Dynamite. A few weeks after filing to trademark monikers such as Sports Entertainer and The Influencer, Chris Jericho debuted a new gimmick on this week's St. Patrick's Day Slam edition of AEW Dynamite. Accompanied to the ring by Jake Hager, Daniel Garcia and 2.0 of the Jericho Appreciation Society stable, Jericho explained why he's always been a sports entertainer and not merely a pro wrestler. Quote, if there was no Chris Jericho, there'd be no AEW. But instead of praising me, you undermine me, you take me for granted, you insult me on social media, I read what you write. It's very hurtful. Jericho continued, quote, you've got the most total package performer in the history of the business right here and you don't appreciate me. The AEW roster doesn't appreciate me. The inner circle never appreciated me. They don't, but these men do. That's why we're the Jericho Appreciation Society. We appreciate each other. We realize we can't relate to the rest of the AEW roster. We aren't like them because they're nothing more than pro wrestlers. A pro wrestler has never been legendary. A pro wrestler has never been a millionaire. And as a legendary millionaire many times over, the only reason I was able to do it is because I'm not a pro wrestler. I'm a sports entertainer. Jericho referring to himself as a sports entertainer led to loud boos from the fans at the Freeman Coliseum in San Antonio, Texas. Chris Jericho referenced a phone call he received from his former best friend Kevin Owens after 2.0, formerly known as Everrise in WWE, were released by WWE last year. Quote, Then you got Jeff Parker and Matt Lee of 2.0. And by the way, that's a stupid name from Bad Creative and you'll never hear it again. We don't use made-up names in the Jericho Appreciation Society. We use our real names. From now, Matt Lee is Daddy Magic, Matt Minard, and Jeff Parker is Cool Hand Edge, Angelo Parker. 
Why do they appreciate me? A year ago, I got a call from my former best friend, Kevin, who said, hey, I need some help for some buddies of mine who just got fired. Can you please put them on Talk is Jericho so they can get a job? So I brought these two men into my house. I'd never met them before. At the end of the podcast, I realized these guys have passion and desire. AEW hired them, and that's why they appreciate me. In conclusion, Jericho declared that the era of the sports entertainer was upon AEW. There you have it, the latest creation from the master manipulator and last real genius in the business, Jericho stressed. And remember this date, because this is a day when a new era begins in AEW, the era of the sports entertainer. This is the Jericho Appreciation Society, and that's, that is entertainment. WWE makes WrestleMania 38 lineup change, kickoff pre-show start times revealed. WWE has confirmed that there will be two hour WrestleMania 38 kickoff pre-shows, one for each night. The WrestleMania 38 kickoff pre-show is scheduled to begin at 6 p.m. Eastern time on night one and night two. The kickoffs will run for two hours until the main card begins at 8 p.m. Eastern time. There is no word on who will be featured on the kickoff panels or what matches will take place on the kickoff, but we will keep you updated. In more news on the WrestleMania 38 card, WWE no longer has AJ Styles vs WWE Hall of Famer Edge assigned to a specific night. The match was previously announced for WrestleMania Sunday, but now it is once again listed for Night 1 or Night 2. AJ is returning to Raw this coming Monday to continue his feud with Edge, so we should find out then if the bout will air during Night 1 or Night 2. Out of the 12 matches slash segments announced for WrestleMania 38, only two have not been assigned to a night. AJ vs Edge and the Street Profits vs Raw Tag Team Champions RK Bro. WrestleMania 38 will take place on Saturday, April 2nd and Sunday, April 3rd from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Joey Janela confirms he will not be re-signing with AEW. Joey Janela's time in AEW is coming to an end. Janela confirmed his current contract will expire on May 1st, and he says he does not intend to re-sign with the company. Quote, I'm going to have to say no now, Janela told Denise Salcedo. I'm not interested in signing with AEW, re-signing with them. Janela implied that his departure from AEW was the company's decision, feeling the turning point for him in AEW was a match against Eddie Kingston for an episode of AEW Dark back in January. Quote, I think a lot of it has to do with a situation where I worked with Eddie Kingston in Charlotte and I super kicked him in the face a little bit too hard, came in a little bit too hot, Janela recalled. I had been squatting probably 50 more pounds than I'm used to be squatting and doing 100 pounds more on the leg press and I don't know. I didn't realize I had that kind of power in my legs and I gave him a super kick and I broke his orbital bone. He was going into a feud with Chris Jericho and I feel that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. A lot of guys, maybe some older heads that believe my hype and believe that I was some kind of dangerous professional wrestler. I've had times where I've injured people, of course, everyone has. But once you get that reputation, it's hard to break that. I've had a string of bad luck throughout my AEW career and that may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. But I don't know because they don't communicate with me. WWE files motion to dismiss MLW's antitrust lawsuit, Court Bauer reacts. WWE has officially responded to the federal antitrust lawsuit filed by MLW back in January. As noted, MLW filed the lawsuit back in January detailing WWE's alleged, quote, ongoing attempts to undermine competition in and monopolize the professional wrestling market by interfering with MLW's contracts and business prospects, end quote. In an update, WWE filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit this week. WWE's motion to dismiss includes a shot at MLW for giving up on competing in the ring. Quote, MLW has given up competing in the ring and chosen instead to compete in the courtroom, WWE attorneys wrote. WWE also pointed out how MLW's narrative about other pro wrestling competitors undermines its argument against WWE. They noted how AEW and Impact Wrestling have managed to get their own distribution deals with national networks. They also noted AEW's success and how AEW recently purchased Ring of Honor. Quote, AEW's success further undercuts MLW's unsupported assertion that substantial barriers to entry exist, WWE lawyers wrote. They continued, quote, AEW also recently purchased another promotion, Ring of Honor, from Sinclair Broadcast Group to operate as a secondary business, end quote, adding that other wrestling companies have not had issues with increasing their content output. 
MLW has until April 22nd to oppose WWE's motion to dismiss. WWE has until May 16th to file a reply in support of its motion to dismiss. MLW is seeking a jury trial. They are also asking for compensatory, treble and exemplary damages and an injunction barring WWE from quote, inflicting further irreparable harm for its anti-competitive and tortuous conduct and legal costs. MLW Court Bauer issued a response to WWE's motion to dismiss via PW Insider and said he looks forward to the case making it to court. Quote, of course WWE is scrambling to dismiss. They don't want this thing to go to court. I look forward to that opportunity, Bauer said. WWE provided following media statement back in January when the lawsuit was first filed, quote, WWE believes these claims have no merit and intends to vigorously defend itself against them. So what are your thoughts on today's Wrestling News Roundup? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Be sure to like and subscribe to Wrestling Inc. And I'll speak to you again very, very soon.